Welcome everyone. Today we'll have a video to look at the drop rates of Genshin Impact. In this video, we'll look at the drop rates for the World Monsters, which cost 40 Risen. As you can see over here, my drop rates are not great, and this is just not for one case, this is for many cases. We'll go into the details of those elite boss drop rates for different artifacts, essential materials, and also to investigate whether there's a shadow nerf with patch 1.2 for the drop of items. We'll also be looking at the artifact main stats and also sub stats drop rate. What I mean by that is, after looting a 5 star artifact, what are the chances of you getting a geo element? What are the chances of you getting pile element, attack percentage, defense percentage? We'll look at the visual guide and also different numbers for the main stats, also for the sub stats. What are the probability distributions? What are your chances of getting a critical rate on the sub stats? Now lately, I have received a lot of messages about whether there's a hidden nerf with patch 1.2. The drop rates from those elite 40 risen bosses are not great. We can see over here, this is the drop loot from the World 7 monster, and this cost me 40 risen. I only got 2 of the blue, 2 of the green. I didn't even get a golden artifact, and this is just not for one case. I'll show you guys another case. So over here, I have just made a boss fight before this recording, and guess what guys, my luck is still not up there. And this time it's even worse, I got 2 and 2 last time, I got 2 and 1 this time. And also, guess what, I got 2 purple artifacts, hooray! <laughs> but yes, the job traits are not great, and I really got concerned, and so what I did was, I started to investigate, I spoke to other people who are looking at the rates, and let's have a look at what is happening. In order to investigate the change of rates, I came to the Data Gatherers Discord. If you guys don't know about them, they're actually made from volunteers and they're gathering data from different players and they're calculating those data and they're telling up those data and gathering those rates for us for a good summary. So over here you can see a number of players posting what they looted from different world levels and the data gatherers will take those information and compare those with the previous information as well. So over here you can see a summary of data from the data gatherers before patch 1.2 and those are the rates for different world levels for the elite boss, which costs 40 risen, and those is a compiled rate for all of the boss monsters. You can see over here, those are the rates for basically world level 6 and world level 7, which is what we want to focus on. You can see the rates for the essential materials, and we can see the purple materials are not very high. It is about 0.12 or 0.13 per run, and each of those runs costs 40 risen. Now I messaged some of the staff members from the Data Gatherers Discord and asked them about whether they have noticed a change between the patch 1.1, 1.2 and if they can compare the rates. So Rasim over here is actually one of the subscribers on YouTube as well. He told me that there has not been any massive changes. He told me over here, because a lot of players are raising the concern, there had been comparisons on the Discord for the Data Gatherers and also from GlatchMC. He told me that there's two tables. They have had a table for patch 1.1 and 1.0 and also a table for patch 1.2. Let's have a look at those two tables. And over here to summarize, yes guys, the rates has not been changed. So there has not been a shadow nerf of the rates and it turns out we're just super unlucky, <laughs> especially for my case. Notice previously I was you know, farming, I wasn't getting a lot. So let's have a look at those two tables. Let's look at the rate comparisons. So over here we saw earlier, this is the table from patch 1.0 and patch 1.1. You can see the number of runs they have gathered from a lot of players. We can see over here there's quite a bit of work, over 4,000 data cases recorded, and our thanks goes to the data gatherer volunteers. You can see on the next image, this is the new data from patch 1.2, and what we want to look at is the drop rate of the century materials and also the 5 star artifacts. Let's look at world 7 for this case. We can see 0.6%, we see about 2.1, about 1.5, and 0.12. And if we come back over here, we can see something similar, about 0.6, 2.1, 1.5, 1.3, or 0.13. So there hasn't been any massive changes with the data, and if you do see the rates are a little lower in comparison, this is because this case has much, much more cases, because there's more data. Currently, there isn't that many entries for the data with patch 1.2. But as the data gatherer gets more data, it is likely we can estimate the rates for everything. And if you guys are not aware, the data gatherers do have their own Discord. If you do want to support them, join the Discord and follow the instructions to actually submit your cases. You can see over here. Make sure you do not submit your screenshots with your user ID and try to avoid sending any of your party information just to be safe. So now that we know there hasn't been a shadow nerf with a patch 1.2 drop rates, it's just me being super unlucky. And after that, let's come over to the artifacts. 
what we're going to see is the chance of getting a monster artifact from different pieces, from the goblet and also from the headgear. We'll also see the chance of getting monsters, also substats from different artifacts. And over here, you might be wondering, why, why am I getting geo percentage on my goblet? And I need hydro and you know, those are my questions. And let's have a look at the numbers and how we can use those numbers. So let's first come over to this post by Linux2 over here. He talked about the headgear and also the goblet men's stats distribution. He used about 400 of those pieces. And what we can see is it's quite graphical and it's quite visual, which is really nice. We can see that for the goblet, there is a number of range of stats you can get those. You can get all the elemental damage bonus. You can also get physical damage bonus and attack percentage, HP, and also defense. Right away, guys, you can see a big disparity. The attack, HP, and also defense take about 60% of all your rolls. So what that means is, if you're looking at a goblet, you're getting HP percent, you're getting attack percent, you're not getting your elemental damage. Whatever it is, you're having 60% chance of getting the other ones you don't need. And after that, you can see the elementals are breaking up in about 5% separation. So Geo, Animal, Hydro, and all of those are broken up, including physical damage. So each time you go in for one of those artifacts, you have only 5% chance of getting the right elemental artifact for the main stats. And this is extremely rare. So that is why when we're farming for goblets, those are the most difficult ones to find. We're going to some of the tips I have over here, how to use those information and how to make those artifacts to our advantage after. Now coming over to the stats for the headgear main stats, we can see that the headgear have elemental mastery, HP percentage, attack percentage, healing, and also defense. What we really wanted is critical rate and also critical damage. Notice the critical rate and critical damage only takes about 18 or 20% of the entire artifact and everything else we don't really need unless you're building a special character maybe you know who totally in the future for the HP percent. So what we can see is we really want critical damage and that is not very high as well, about 8%. We can use critical rate as well sometimes, that is only 10%. So again, a lot of the stats are disproportionately distributed. The HP, attack, and also defense seems to be doubling everything else. And if that is the case, if we come back to you know my stats, you can see that why I'm getting so many HP percent. And those are kind of useless unless you have characters like Zonli or Hu Tao to scale with them. So again, you can see if we're going for critical rate chances, they are about 18 or 20 percent. And in comparison, they are slightly better rate than the elemental damage, which is only about 5%. So the critical rate and critical damage on the headgear are the second most rare things to get with the artifacts. Now coming over to this post by DJ the Crazed. Now if you think those numbers are not enough, I'm going to bombard you with more numbers. I'll try to not do too much numbers. So what we're going to see is I have the screenshots over here to be enlarged a little bit so we can see those. I'll just go briefly on those and I'll give you guys a summary then try to get you guys read all the numbers. So over here a friend tallied up a number of artifacts including the flower, the feather and everything else. For the flower, you can see it rolls into HP 100% of the times for the main stats. For the sap stats, we can see the difference of sap stats that appears on the flower for all those 74 flowers. What we want to focus on is how rare the critical rate and also critical damage appears. This seems to have the lowest rate. And this is the same case for all the artifacts. So if we go to the next artifact for the feather, you can see the attack, you can see the critical rate and critical damage being the rare stats on those as well. And if we go to the next one, we can see the timepiece, and what we can see again is the critical rate and critical damage being much lower on the row. You also see a bit of the distribution, similar to what we saw before. HP, attack, and defense percent seems to be taking twice the probability. About 60% of the main stats are taken by those. It's good that we're getting attack percent though for that particular piece. And if we keep going, what we're going to see is, again, a high distribution of the HP, attack, and also defense for the main stats, and also a very low chance of getting critical rate and critical damage. So those are pretty consistent, and that is why, guys, those are very rare. And finally, if we come to the crown, the same results as before, about 4 or 6% of getting different elemental with the crown for the main stats, and also the critical rates are really low. You can see the numbers right away, those are the lowest chance of getting those rates. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news, and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Now, to spare you guys from reading all those data and try to figure out what is happening, 
I made a small summary over here to see what we can learn from those artifact rates and also chances. Now as I said earlier, the first thing we notice is that the critical sap stats for critical damage and also critical rate are much more rare. And this is especially the case for having both of them on the same artifact and then looking for attack percentage. And that is why guys, going for all three of those can be extremely hard. I'll show you guys one of my artifacts I found, and this is the one I found yesterday. I managed to get all three and also HP percent. It rolled into a really good number over here, I was really amazed. This is by far my best artifact, and this took me over 1000 reasons to find. And HP percent rolled once, I was a little sad on this. But that's my best artifact for now. Now because we know this is so rare, I'm estimating at least 500 or 1000 reasons to get a good artifact with good sap stats. And we're not even talking about the main stats here. We'll talk about this after. Now knowing that the rates for rolling for the main stats of the artifact for the elemental damage and also physical damage is extremely low and you can easily get something that you don't need like a geo bonus on the hydro cup, which is really annoying. So what can we do about this? What we know is that they are about 5% per element and also getting the main stat correctly doesn't mean that we get the good sap stats which is really difficult and we know how hard the sap stats are. So what we want to do is we want to leave the set pieces open. We want to leave the goblet and also head pieces open. I'm sure this might seem a little trivial, but seeing the rates, this really helps. Because we can swap in a set that is not from this set and have the better rates. What we want to do is we want to choose the goblet first because the goblet only have one choice. If I'm going for Klee, she has to get Pyro for the highest damage. And if I'm going for Klee at the same case, I can have two choices. I can go with critical rate and also critical damage. So this choice is only 5%. This choice is about 20%. So if I'm looking for both choices, I'll opt for the offset globe and any globe can work. And then if my globe works, I can go for the headpiece. So we'll also compare the sap stats. I'll give you guys a small example over here, what I mean by that. So for my Venti's case, I'm going for four piece set of the Vetamesin to reduce enemy resistance. But I also want high elemental mastery for him for the throw effect. And what I did over here is, I was very fortunate to find the Amimo damage for Venti. And after that, my headpiece really opens up. And this way I can go for the elemental mastery for the headpiece. Notice this is not from the same set. And this is my choice. If I don't get my particular goblet for the Amimo damage, I might go for that first. If I get that, then I go for the elemental mastery on the next piece. So my priority is always on my elemental damage because that is the most rare one. And after that, if I get good sap stats, I'm really happy. Even if I don't, I'm okay. And then I can go for the next piece. So the head piece and the goblet are the most important ones that we want to swap up with. Now, because we're talking about artifacts, I also get this question very often. Do I go for a four piece set for the perfect piece combo for my character? Or do I go for a random set with some really good substats and also main stats? So what I recommend to most of my viewers is make sure you test it out first. And then if you can, screenshot some of your damages to compare the sets. So wear the first one, try the damage. Then wear the second one, try the damage. I'll give you guys an example over here. I tried my damage with my Kaching. Notice that she doesn't have the 4-piece. I'm not getting the 4-piece of the Thunder Fury. I'm also not giving her the 4-piece of the Thunder Smoother, which is supposed to increase damage by 35%, because I do not have those artifacts ready to be strong enough for her. So what I did over here is, I opt for all the artifacts with some good sap stats. So notice this one has the attack and also critical rate. This one also has critical damage, attack percentage. This one has some really good critical damage. And after that, we have the electro damage with some really good sap stats. And finally, we have the critical damage and also some sap stats. So I opt for two broken sets because those give the better stats. And in comparison of damage, I do do a little higher than going for the four set. Now while looking for artifacts, it's also important for us to consider the alternatives for other characters. What I mean by that is, let's say if I'm going for my Kaching set and I have a lot of good pieces. Over here I also have a really good piece for Kaching. You can see this is a headpiece for critical damage, also critical rate and also energy recharge. This is a really good piece for her. But I don't really have the set effects for her to make this effective. The stats are still good. But if I were to have this piece, what I'm going to lose is, I'm going to lose my two-piece effect of 18% attack. And the 18% attack is a little weaker than the critical rate, I'll still go for the critical rate. But there's an opportunity cost. If I give this piece to Kaching, my Zhongli will not have this piece. And Zhongli actually wanted this 10% critical rate more than Kaching. 
because for Kachin's case, I know that with her talents, she also gains 15% more critical rate. And currently her critical rate is actually pretty good, with about 52, with another 15, we're close to 70%. So I know that she can use this piece, but Zhongli really wanted this piece. Because if I were to give this to Zhongli, he will gain 10% more critical rate. Otherwise he'll be on 10%, uh, otherwise he'll be on 20%. With this piece, he will be on 30%. So in that chance, I had a little weaker Kachin with critical rate, but I give a massive boost to Zhongli. So this is why I say consider the alternatives. If you give in to different characters, make sure you think about what if I give this piece to the other character? Do I get two really strong character, or do I really get one slightly stronger character? To summarize this video, I'm really happy there isn't any hidden nerfs or shadow nerfs with the rates with patch 1.2. It's just me getting extremely unlucky. There is another theory as well. People are saying because previously we don't notice those bad rates because you don't see the summary. Now that you see the summary, you only look at the bad ones, you forget the good ones. And because of that, it might seem the rates are a little bad. But those doesn't look good, right? Come on, what level 7? I get those? I must be really unlucky for the past few days. We also had a look at the distribution of the drop rate for main stats, also sub stats of the 5 star artifacts. And we had some really good summaries, conclusions, so tips and also guides for the artifacts. Let me know what you guys think about this compounded artifact guide. I'm still working on more artifact guides as well. And if you have any tips and also guides for us on artifacts, definitely let us know in the comments below. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips, and news, and even updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with sketching and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.